Hello and welcome to Let's Talk ERP Cloud Customers. This special edition podcast is brought to you in partnership with the Let's Talk Data Podcast. I am your host, Jennifer Frank McGrory. In today's episode, we're going to pick up where we left off with the global CIO from Haynes Brands, Subra Goparjo. The last question I asked Subra was, if you had to go through this entire experience again, would you make the same decisions? Let's have Subra answer that question and a few more as we kick off this edition of Let's Talk ERP Cloud Customers. Good question and also a tricky one. As I mentioned, SAP RISE was our chosen uh, deployment option from a hosting point of view. So what does it mean uh, from a technology stack? If I tier the technology stack, there is uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, those layers are managed by SAP. And having a customer service uh, success partner early on, including a bunch of resources, uh, we we really got started uh, early on. So check on that, right? And uh, we are responsible in in the RISE footprint for the application data and and changes. My suggestion would be, if I were to do this again, know what you're signing from a contract point of view. So SAP, provides a um, um, bunch of services. So I think creating a RACI, seeing, um, making sure that what is included, what is not, is fully understood up front. So that is critical. And we also have a max attention service. There are areas where we don't want to actually build a capability. We do want SAP to take care of it. And then there are areas where the SAP rise doesn't cover. So that can be bridged through uh, max. So if I were to do this again, or if I if someone were to ask me, I would say, understand what you are, what is included, and come up with a mechanism uh, to either build for the gaps or um, or use Max. So you're right. So you have all your foundations set and ready to go. Okay. Now, here's a good one. This is for you personally. What are you excited about? As I've said, our goal or my vision at least is to make uh, technology be uh, a differentiator in the marketplace, just not the enabler. So from that standpoint, Mm -hmm. stakeholder alignment and collaboration between business and IT is critical. I'm really excited that is, uh, that's working very well. I'm excited about the art of possible that the platform would bring. I talked about capabilities like omni-channel inventory visibility, you know, whether it is wholesale, retail, e-com, Inventory visibility is critical for a fashion company like ours. I talked about frictionless consumer experience. You know, when I say frictionless means uh, the omni capabilities that the platform can uh, would enable, uh, the, whether it is cross store selling, um, whether it is uh, the omni commerce related pieces of it, BTP uh, can provide that seamless integration uh, across systems and uh, platforms that will really condense our timeline. So I'm excited about all those newer business capabilities that can propel Haynes into retail excellence. Awesome. That's, that's, I love your passion behind your work. That's so cool. And what's next for Haynes brand? I mean, you, you got a lot going what's on right next, now. So, uh... so let's talk about, let's talk about the future. <laughs> Sorry to, Push so uh, I, I touched upon this. Uh, I touched upon this briefly. Um, we we are um, we are setting up a digital core, a digital core of you know as um, for fashion plus car, and the data that uh, underpins it, right, and then the integration that goes along. This particular um, digital core is going to be enabled for Champion North America by April 2023. Mm-hmm. So what we have is we have a system, a platform, a playbook, uh, and, and uh, the guidelines that comes along with that, the learnings. Uh, now we want to extend this particular platform to other regions, including onboarding other brands. Uh, so NetNet, we would be completing the transformation within the next uh, 24 to 28 months. Can you share with me... Um, are you using any other SAP products? Yeah, um, we have a sizable SAP footprint. So let me go from uh, left to right, meaning create to 
consume if you will create to sell multiple value chain you're comfortable with uh, retail uh, we have retail planning um, uh, ipp is in our integrated business planning system uh, we have sap's mdg uh, the master mm-hmm. data governance that's our enterprise data management system i talked about data catalogs data catalogs are on um, uh, sap information steward and then s4 fashion is our, um, our digital core along with car sap car uh, for um, security we have uh, grc segregation of duties and uh, enterprise risk management so we have uh, that on uh, grc sentiment analysis um, it's on qualtrix sap qualtrix integration i talked about integration the global integration platform is uh, sap is btp we are evaluating uh, for global trade and there are some options but i'm leaning towards sap is gts uh, and then there is for indirect procurement we are also evaluating sap ariba so net net yeah a lot of sap products i forgot about <laughs> i forgot about real time analytics so this is where the beauty of it is and it's transformational yeah. truly transformational is sap's dwc the data that is available in the sap footprint can be replicated real time in dwc and if some conditions apply it can also be visualized in uh, through embedded analytics the conditions being you know if the uh, use case is not true intense and if the data is in the same table you can consume it real time so truly game changing in terms of real time analytics that's our sap footprint just a small footprint that's cool so did you seriously consider an alternative to rise and if so what were the drivers for you to choose rise sure uh, i did it so there is um, the options clearly are um, you know either you go in your own vpc manage it by a third party go on prem or go rise and let the complexity um, be managed by sap um so i touched upon you know you, you got to know what you are signing up for so the the good part of rise is infrastructure as a service platform as a service um those components are completely managed by sap it's always available the platform is scalable there are you know you're responsible for application and data point of view uh, the integrated release management if you will the promote to production strategy uh, and mechanics around that the charm if you have charm Uh, change and release management that is uh, so those who are not so so we did evaluate the options and we made a right call with uh, sap rise don't get me wrong there are challenges with rise you got to know what you're signing up for and uh, the, those challenges can be uh, if you do a trade off uh, rise offers uh, the complexity is taken care by sap if it answers your answers your question what level of business transformation are you taking on with this program and then and a follow on to that is what is the in- intensity business user involvement let me first touch upon the first one so the mm-hmm. complexity so as i touched upon um, earlier hains wants to transform we want to transform ourselves into a growth company into a retail centric uh, consumer focused hyper digital organization so clearly afs system AFS being a parallel uh, footwear solution, industry solution from SAP, is more of wholesale focused. From there, we want to go to a wholesale plus retail ERP system. That's what the SAP uh, S4 fashion will afford us, and uh, with uh, the digital core, which includes SAP Car, that will give us the capabilities that will uh, that will help us to propel into retail excellence. so that's the um, that's the out of possible in terms of capabilities and we're excited about the changes uh, regarding the second question about the business involvement this is business led i call it business led it enabled if you if you look at uh, the three in a box structure the governance structure um, it's all business led we are enabling it for the uh, for business if you will And then one more question it kind of takes you back to retail industry. So 
it goes back to how important um, is it your ERP have functionality that's specific to your industry? So it's specific to obviously to retail. Sure. If you look at the common processes, right? ERP has a ERP has the business processes that are fundamental to run any business on the platform, whether it is planning, order management, uh, order execution, and so on and so forth, financials. The industry specific module, we do have ECC today. ECC, uh, and I told you that it's, it's wholesale uh, focused primarily B2B. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And our goal is to transform ourselves into a consumer centric car. Uh, consumer centricity is big, like most of the other fashion companies. Uh, fashion is unique and uh, uh, very important um, uh, industry solution for us. The capabilities that we talked about Omnichannel, omni-commerce capabilities like um, you know stock protection, meaning protect the stock for uh, one customer over the other. Inventory visibility across channels, whether it is wholesale, e-com, retail, these are very unique uh, DTC capabilities. Very important to uh, to our business. SAP's S4 fashion enables uh, that along with uh, along with car. Did you intentionally phase MDG up front? If so, why? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I'll tell you with regards to the global transformation, both complexity and uh, actually acceleration that data can uh, can help. Data, as as you all know, is fundamental. And um, if you get your data right, I know many SAP projects that fail. If you if you look at the number of projects that fail, one of the key contributing factor would be data followed by enterprise adoption, followed by others, right? So so we were very cognizant uh, about uh, getting data right. So we onboarded, we looked into the siloed data um, sources that we have. We harmonized the data, found the common denominator, onboarded that to MDG. Now that can syndicate to multiple downstream systems. Like we have like 45 of those. Uh, that playbook, that framework, that guideline is already there. The governance structure is in place. Information steward is providing the business scorecards, the visibility of it. Uh, that is critical. Now, what is left is uh, extending the platform to other regions. If you ask why SAP transformation takes so long, I would basically give you two reasons. One is get your data right, and then the get your integration right the long pool in the tent that we touched upon. So if you get those two right, then the, you know, you have a good chance to accelerate your program. Um, we talked about OCM from an enterprise adoption perspective. So net-net, uh, that's the reason uh, rational behind uh, MDG first. Uh, in such a large and complex journey, how, did, how do you bridge the gap for the as-is to the 2B solution? We did not focus too much on the the as is, and my recommendation to uh, all sure. my friends and other companies, if you are embarking on similar journey, uh, look into SAP's model company. SAP's model company, SAP is saying, folks, business processes are common and fundamental to uh, how a fashion company runs. We have already eliminated that complexity and I'm presenting that with uh, in a form of a model company. So we took that model company on top of that model company, our system integrator, uh, Attune slash Wipro, have built their own uh, equity of sort, which is fashion template. So we have Attune fashion template implemented. Plus, we had our own gaps on top of it. So that's the template, the global template. Now we are taking that global template, which we are saying that it works for our flagship brand. Why would it not work for other brands? So we are doing, once we are done with Champion in April, we'll be doing a fit gap of sort for other brands. That is a very small, I would say, session of sort uh, to uh, to factor localization across other regions. Or there are some nuances for other brands. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's not all simple for other, uh, other brands. There is customization, personalization aspect of it, which is not common to other brands. How do you deal? with implementation in, in such a scenario. So those are the things we are 
we are a little bit mindful of uh, the common denominator model company or template and the fit gap is for lo localization or brand related nuances that needs to be factored in then back to the partners we have uh, what what is e or what what is ey's role versus other integration partners and is is the relationship working well so you know we touched upon it you have to make a choice if you each partner has their strengths can you capitalize on their strengths but then there is the downside is you have multiple vendors to deal with uh, if you have a good governance structure a good framework upfront uh, understanding on roles and responsibilities um, having that operational rhythm and governance structure really helped us we did have uh, we did have a fair share of challenges i think now we have we got that rhythm and things are working very well right now to your point about uh, uh, what is ey ey is doing our uh, finance implementation all things finance central finance is our i didn't talk about uh, central finance as a footprint so uh, sap central finance is what we are uh, implementing and ey is helping with that uh, with the journey so we have one more question how do you empower the haynes team to make decisions how did you ensure that they understand new solutions and how to match that with internal processes that's a fantastic question actually uh, how do we empower so there is uh, when we were um, doing the implementation i talked about model company the art of possible needs to be told up front it should be it's a show and tell so you got to demonstrate to your business stakeholders the business processes that the platform is enabling the business capabilities that that what uh, m what would come as part of that is a show and tell process and uh, by implementing model company uh, during our design phases uh, we demonstrated that across various functions and that uh, resonated well with the uh, business they knew what is coming so that's uh, in terms of empowering um, the the governance structure there are design decisions which are uh, clearly uh, would require some enhancements right so we cannot basically say it's 100% out of the box uh, but as a, as a as an organization as a team uh, we had uh, were very methodical and diligent on keeping it out of the box as much as possible we did make some enhancements it was a collective decision and working with sap we are trying to see if they can be folded into the core over the course of next few quarters uh, so in terms of empowerment i would say a governance structure a method on ways of working uh, helped us there um is this a greenfield implementation and if so how did you convince your business partners to take on this added level of complexity it's not the greenfield greenfield uh, if you will um, depends on how you define it i would call it brownfield we are already an sap shop we implemented afs in 1997 albeit in other regions uh, we don't have sap uh, in emia uh, we have um, stell 3000 it's a as 400 product in uh, haines australia uh, where the platform is going to be rolled out it's a different uh, uh, it's a different platform we didn't embark on extending that uh, platform to those uh, regions yet that's coming but the underlying reason is is not changing why we are doing transformation in the first place is to reposition our company to be more of this retail centric consumer focused organization that i talked about um we have a lot of technical debt and complexity that we have built over the past several years the only way to simplify that structure to get closer to our consumer uh, is to uh, invest our way out on uh, modernizing our platforms no one is not aligned with that uh, with that overarching um, vision so i think um, i'm i'm confident that as we roll this out to other regions other plants they will jump on this journey all right we're going to do one more question 
just the great, great, um, great interaction. How long did all the preliminary assessments, business alignment, scoping take before start the starting of your ex execution on your execution on your project? Yeah, so I'll, I'll let me touch upon three themes there, so that uh, you know, and generally, having implemented several SAP programs in the past and other engagements, this should be true for any. Right, so one is, you know, how do we get started? I think most of the the biggest um, and why we are transforming. If you are already past that journey, meaning of why we are transforming, that comes from uh, right from the board level to uh, the executive leadership level to the organization level. Um, so if, you know, for us, uh, the full potential initiative uh, being closer to the consumer that vision was completely aligned. Then the next is how do we deploy uh, the solution? So I touched upon the Rise platform. You know, it was like a flip of a switch. It's not really a flip of a switch. Almost closer in terms of we already decided that Rise is our choice. Uh, it comes with this customer success manager, the couple of engineers. You've got to know what you're signing up, all that good stuff. But it was enabled fairly quick. Model company is what we said that, okay, it has to be show and tell. Otherwise, whether you call it agile, vigile, um, or out of all, whatever is the methodology, unless the business stakeholder sees how the uh, business process is getting transformed, they will never be there. So SAP helped us with the model company implementation from that standpoint. Uh, that was the unlock. So net net to answer your question, from timing point of view, we started this journey in August, September last year, and now system integration testing is happening. And we have some challenges with regards to when we can go live. We don't want to go live during um, our peak uh, holiday season. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, the UAT and training uh, all will be complete by April. And that's where we want to take the template, bounce it against, uh, uh, do the fit gap in other regions, and then net-net uh, net complete the transformation in 24 to 28 months for other regions. Wow, this is awesome. Subra, thank you so much for your time today. I loved everything you said, but I especially love the whole concept around adopting a consumer-centric mindset with your commitment to your growth strategy. I also really appreciated the vision and the mission of your organization and your plans to be data-driven. So many thanks, all the best with your with all the things that you have going on and all the balls you have in your air and Best of luck with uh, your your big go live in April, and I'm sure we'll be in touch before then. Thank you all, and thank you, Jennifer. I truly enjoyed sure. the conversation. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Let's Talk ERP Cloud Customers. If you enjoyed this conversation and want to continue in a smaller, more interactive setting, I would like to invite you to sign up for a value exploration workshop. This two and a half hour program will provide you an opportunity to have a hands-on gamified experience with an ERP simulation competition, followed by a Rise with SAP strategy session. Check out the show notes to learn more about the Value Exploration Workshop and upcoming dates. Finally, I would like to thank the Let's Talk Data podcast for their partnership. We couldn't do what we do without them. Until next time, I am Jennifer Frank McGrory. Have a great rest of your day.